Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ, and today we're going to be doing something a little different. This is the first episode of Anime Analytics, a series I've created as an excuse to make videos about the Pokemon anime. This almost certainly won't be that regular, but it's here if I ever want to revisit it. Today I'm delving into a subject that I've wondered about for a long time. I'm going to go back through the archives and look at Ash Ketchum's entire battle history to determine who truly is his best Pokemon. I'm sure there are hundreds and thousands of videos and articles discussing this exact topic, but this answer is entirely down to who has won the most and lost the least. My heart isn't going to come into it. Just because I loved Bayleaf doesn't mean she gets preferential treatment. To compile this data, I went through every battle that Ash has had where I can be sure that he and his Pokemon are giving their all. If he's just having a warm-up battle against Brock, we can't count that because Brock is only trying to help, he's not trying to win. The only battles we can confidently use are gym battles, Pokemon League battles, rival battles with major rivals, and all of the other battle tournaments featured throughout the series. I'm sure there are a few matchups throughout the 1000 plus episodes that I've missed, but for this video we've got info on more than 100 of Ash's battles. The simple breakdown for how Pokemon are judged is this. If they score a knockout in battle, that counts as a win. If they get knocked out in battle, that counts as a loss. Nice and easy. Of all the Pokemon Ash has used throughout his journey, 47 have been featured in one of the battles included, and all but one have scored at least one win or loss. Ash's Pidgeot, which was really a Pidgeotto for 99% of its screen time, featured in several Kanto gym battles, but because they were constantly interrupted by Team Rocket and abandoned, the Flying type never managed to finish a battle. The other 46 though, all managed to at least have an impact on a major matchup. If you're interested, across all the battles I looked at, Ash has knocked out 294 Pokemon, and had his Pokemon defeated 224 times. So pretty decent record. Anyway, let's start at the bottom of the barrel. The Losers Club. 12 of Ash's Pokemon have a losing record in battle, fainting more times than they've knocked out an opponent. I'm going to give you all a second to pause the video and go down to the comments and guess which of Ash's Pokemon has the worst record in major battles, because it's a surprising one. Before we get to that, let's go through the best of the worst. With the narrowest losing margin, Ash's Pig Knight has defeated 7 opponents and fallen 8 times in battle for a 47% win percentage. Oshawott and Talonflame come in next at 44%, Heracross and Unpheasant are just a little worse at 40%, Torterra and Snivy are really the last pair with a semi-respectable record at 38%, then we get down to the really bad ones. With a 33% win rate claiming victory just once for every 3 battles, we have Tauros and Gliscor. Another couple of surprising ones. What I learned in researching this video is that Ash's flying types and grass starters really never got much love in the anime. We're down to the three biggest losers now. With three wins and seven losses on his resume, Ash's Torkoal claims the bronze medal in the race for the biggest loser. In second place at 29%, we've got Totodile. The Johto starter really didn't get many chances in battle and when he did, there wasn't much to get excited about. In fairness, he did once take down a Kingdra, and it was hilarious. So at least there's that. The biggest loser of all though, with just a 25% success rate, Ash Ketchum's worst Pokemon of all time, Noivern. The part flying, part dragon type came to Ash as an egg, and although he had a few impressive showings, his record doesn't quite reflect it. Sort of shows the flaw in this method. Anyway, let's continue. We're not looking for the worst of the worst. We want to find the best of the best. Obviously, we can't jump straight to the best though. Let's see the most middling of Ash's Pokemon next. The 11 members of his team that essentially cancel themselves out, earning the exact same number of wins and losses for a flat 50% win rate. There are a few forgettable Pokemon in this group, but also a few shocks. With 10 wins and 10 losses, Sceptile has the second most battle experience of Ash's Pokemon. Pikachu comes in first with 121 combined wins and losses under his belt, over 100 more than Sceptile. That's not surprising though. What is surprising is that Sceptile, the Pokemon who took down Tobias' Darkrai, has the same number of wins and losses. Gudra and Holucha are also surprises in the tier, but that's what the win-loss percentage does. It throws away bias and agenda, and tells us who is truly the best. Let's move on to the winners now. The Pokemon who are actually worth our time of day. I'm only joking, all Pokemon deserve respect, even the losers. First up for the winners, here are the 8 Pokemon who won more than they lost, but only marginally. 
With 7 wins and 6 losses, Quilava is the narrowest winner across Ash's entire journey, sitting at a 54% win rate. Livani and Palpatode both sit at 57% with a 4-3 record. Swallow comes in at 59% with 10 wins and 7 losses to its name. In fairness to Swallow, getting to 10 wins is no mean feat. Other than Pikachu, only 5 of Ash's Pokemon have reached that number. That achievement doesn't quite make Swallow Ash's best generic early flying type though. That honour goes to Noctowl, who's one of 4 Pokemon that finished up with a 60% win percentage. This is also where we find Squirtle, Melmetal, and the Apom that Ash eventually traded to Dawn. Now, before we get into the true elite, the 5 Pokemon who have won more than 2 thirds of their total battles, let's take a look at the 10 Pokemon who sit just outside the top tier. Glalie is up first. With an impressive performance at the Evergrande Conference, Glalie racked up a 5-3 record in his time with Ash, which holds up pretty damn well. One better though is Pikachu. With a ridiculous 76 wins and 45 losses, Pikachu's ever presence in the show is probably enough to earn him the title of Ash's best Pokemon. For some at least, but not here, not today. Almost a quarter of the total wins and losses I counted featured Pikachu. It must be said his record has improved as the series has gone on and he's become much harder to beat in recent years. It's also worth noting that his loss to Trip Snivy was not counted here because he'd just been struck by lightning and he couldn't use Electro-type moves, so it doesn't really count. Still, overall a very respectable record for the Electric Mouse. Up next, with a 63% win rate, we have another Pokemon who crossed the 10 win mark. In fact, with 12 wins, it comes in third behind Pikachu and one other Pokemon for the most wins out of Ash's entire team. It is, of course, Corphish. That's right. The water type has clocked up more wins than Charizard, Sceptile, or Greninja. Along with Pikachu, it's the only one of Ash's Pokemon that made it to 10 wins without reaching its final evolutionary stage. So let's all take a second to appreciate the Ruffian Pokemon. Good work, buddy. The last two Pokemon who don't quite make it to the threshold of a two-thirds win rate are another two old Ash favourites. Bulbasaur sits at 64% with a 9 and 5 record, and Charizard comes in at 65% with 11 wins and 6 losses. If Charizard always tried his hardest, I'm sure his record would look a lot better, but if you're too lazy to battle during the Pokemon League and you get disqualified, that's really on you. As a result, the fan favourite Firestarter doesn't even crack the top 10 when it comes to Ash's biggest winners. It also means that the three Kanto starters who joined Ash Ketchum on his journey all finished with very similar records. Squirtle won and lost the least, Charizard won and lost the most, and Bulbasaur fell right in between on both counts. In the end though, none of them reached the magic number of 66.66 recurring to class them among those who won twice as many battles as they lost. That group of five goes to Gibble, Scraggy, Incineroar, Rowlet, and Greninja. And there goes another fan favourite for this title. I'm sorry guys, the numbers don't lie though. Greninja's incredibly impressive performances through his journey have earned him the number 6 ranking, but he falls just short of a lucrative top 5 spot. Of course, Froakie's gummy frubbles isn't a move. Credit also has to go to Rowlet for achieving the best record of any non-fully evolved Pokemon. The Grass Quill Pokemon stands at 1 foot tall and weighs in at 3.3 pounds, but has been one of Ash's most reliable Pokemon during his time in the Alola region. Okay, we've delayed enough, let's get into the top 5. Coming in 5th with 7 wins and 3 losses for a 70% win rate is Snorlax. The normal type has always looked great in Battle for Ash, and whenever called upon seems likely to pick up a win. Its personality being based entirely around sleeping and eating also makes it the most relatable character in any TV show, maybe ever. For that alone, he's deserving of that number 5 spot. At number 4 with 5 wins and 2 losses and a win percentage of 71%, is the rock type Lycanroc. Previously in Professor Kakui's care as a rock ruff, since joining Ash it has evolved and become one of the most powerful members of his team. It also once knocked out Ash's Rowlet, which actually pushed Rowlet out of the top 5, so that's a pretty elite mentality. As Ash's most dominant Pokemon throughout the most successful period of his journey, an argument could be made for Lycanroc being his best ever. Not in this video though. Congrats on not making the podium. For number 3, we make a big step up to 80% and award the bronze medal to Crocodile. Winning 4 times as many battles as you lose is a serious accomplishment, even if only 5 of your battles were counted. It's still impressive. It was hanging around Unova for like a year before Ash finally caught it, and without its sunglasses, its record would probably be flipped. But 
There's no rule against accessories, so the record stands. Crocodile was comfortably Ash's most successful Pokemon during his travels through the Unova region, and has unquestionably earned his spot on this list. In second place, with 13 wins and 3 losses to its name, Ash's Infernape had an 81% win rate during his time with the Pokemon protagonist. Originally caught and treated like shit by Paul, Chimchar was eventually released and captured by Ash. The Sinnoh Firestarter eventually came back to haunt his former owner by knocking him out of the Lily of the Valley conference, and then, for some reason, Ash decided to not use him against Tobias. The only Pokemon that Ash knew Tobias had was Darkrai, and yet he decided not to bring his most powerful Pokemon, who is part fighting type. Not exactly sure of the logic there. If I was choosing with my heart instead of this fairly random system, I would be telling you all that Infernape is Ash's greatest ever Pokemon. The journey, the wins, the losses, Ash's Infernape is undoubtedly one of his greatest ever Pokemon, but not the best. By win-loss percentage, there is one better. With an 83% win rate through his time with Ash, nobody can touch his greatest ever Pokemon. Only ever defeated once in battle, the single-handed victor of a 3-on-3 Pokemon League match all by himself, Ash Ketchum's greatest ever Pokemon is Kingler. Caught as a tiny little Krabby during Ash's journey through Kanto, the water type was never given much of a chance. It made its battle debut at the Indigo Plateau Conference, and with 4 wins and 0 losses, its record there was unmatched. It evolved during its first ever battle, and its only defeat came at the hands of Misty Psyduck in the World Cup, so I'm not even sure we can really count that as a loss. It's entirely possible that it just felt bad for Psyduck and let him win. With all of the data in front of me, I really can't look past Kingler as Ash Ketchum's greatest ever Pokemon. I have a feeling people will not be happy with that conclusion, but it's what I'm going with. This was pretty different to my regular videos, but I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.